What's up everyone, my name is Michael and welcome to Box Mining. So I have a background in the video game industry and one thing I really want to see is the application of blockchain technology in video games. So why is that important? Why do I want that? It's because video games is all about items. You have your guns, your knives, your weapons, your pets, and even your gold. And these are all items and blockchain is all about tracking items. And that is why it just seems like such a natural match. The thing is, right now we don't see a widespread adoption of blockchain technology in video games. And I made a video about this previously about how we can try to grow this and use a project like Engine Coin to kind of go this from bottom up to get the communities to adopt blockchain and to force gaming companies to do that. Recently, JT from Game Flip called me and he proposed to me a different alternative strategy for that, and I want to talk about that in this video. So, I do want to revisit why we even want to apply this in the first place. So, if you look at a game like World of Warcraft, which I used to play, then you have a lot of items in there. For example, you have your gems, which are very valuable. Sometimes you have to fight raid bosses to get these gems. You have weapons, you have your pets, and when you leave that game, then you have a hard time selling those items for real cash. And the thing is, they are extremely valuable. So at that time, if you want to sell these items, leave the game, change games, it'll be really hard and you have to resort to the black markets. So these are people that are kind of dealing and selling items. But the thing is, it's not official and there's a lot of risk in doing so. There's a similar situation for current games as well. So for example, you have CSGO where you have expensive knives and guns, and you also have player unknowns battlegrounds, which also is also going the itemization route. The thing with these games is that they're on the Steam PC platform, and Valve, the company behind Steam, provides a way for developers to integrate and create items that can be sold on the Steam marketplace. But there are still two disadvantages. One is that they take a 15% cut of every item sold or traded. And another issue is more importantly, is that when you sell item, you only get Steam credit, which means you can only buy future games with that and you can't trade that for real cash, even though it is exactly behaves like real cash. So again, if people really have a lot of items and they want to sell that for real cash, they have to yet again resort to grain markets. So the thing with grain markets is it's vulnerable to scams. So one type of scam is the buyer scam where the buyer buys a digital item and the thing is, once they receive the digital item, they can go to the credit card company and say, hey, guess what? I never got the item. And can you issue a chargeback and reverse the transaction? The thing is, usually the credit card company will go to the seller and ask for a proof of sending the item. The thing is, because the item is digital, it doesn't have a tracking number. And in most cases, because the seller can't provide that tracking number, the payment does get reversed and the seller gets nothing. There's also a seller scam where the buyer pays money, but the the problem is the digital item that is arrived or uh, received isn't exactly the same item. So the are, there's a lot of uncertainty and there's a lot of risks to using gray markets. The thing is this situation is right for smart contracts because you can write a smart contract such a way that it will only send the digital goods if the tokens or funds are received. And the thing is because the transparent co contract can be transparent, the buyer has protection knowing that they'll get the item once the payment is sent and also the seller will have the protection because the tokens are not reversible. So this is a situation where we can eliminate risk and eliminate kind of this uncertainty in dealing with these item transactions. And you know, we've been talking about you know the digitalization of real world assets for a while, but this is digital assets to digital assets. So it should be on a smart contract. The thing is right now, this kind of system is not implemented because developers don't have the experience and they also don't want to take the risk in adopting such a system. That's why we see currencies out there trying to solve this issue issue, but we don't see widespread adoption yet. So this leads us to JT. So JT is currently the CEO of Game Flip and is a currently running marketplace for in-game items and games. And previously he's worked for Area Games, which is a game publisher. And it's this experience as a publisher that is extremely important and pertinent to this idea. The thing is, Publishers are responsible for funding game development and they really want to reduce risk. And that's why they're the ones that kind of are the gatekeepers and also the ones that kind of don't really want to adopt this because there's intrinsic risks in using blockchain for games and for games that their studios produce. 
For publishers to adopt this, they must see a reason to do so and they must see profits. So what he's proposing is that he's going to try to provide incentives and to build a system for the publishers for them already. And then with the incentives, they now have a objective and a reason to adopt the system. He's built up a team of gaming industry experts, for example, his co-founders from Area Games, but also he's got a bunch of advisors. Some of them are from Electronic Arts, GRI, we got Perfect World, and also Glue Mobile. So they got the connections to reach the publishers and get their attention. With the team assembled, he's trying to raise money through an ICO for the flip token. And the flip token will be used for game transfers and for item transfers, and also as an incentive to get publishers on board as well. So Flip is an extension to the game Flip marketplace, but it's also a project by itself to convince publishers to adopt blockchain in their games. The idea is to reserve 40% of the tokens to be distributed to publishers to provide network growth. The idea is to lock certain portions of that 440 million tokens and to give them to publishers after they adopt blockchain. So now this will greatly reduce the risk for the publishers to adopt blockchain technology and adopt a flip token because now they have a guaranteed amount of sum of tokens afterwards after adopting the system and also will bring value to the network once they adopt because once they adopt and start using the token, then the value of the token goes up. This will, amount will be distributed almost every quarter for a year. So there's 40 million tokens there to try to incentivize developers to go on board. Of course, this doesn't mean every developer can hop on board. That is because developing a game is immensely expensive, costing, you know, for small games, 5 million is quite easy to pull off. And for most expensive games, 20 to 30 million per game. So this incentive will probably be for a combination of medium sized developers, or if big developers want to try to monetize and use a blockchain on a small portion of a game. So it won't be for the whole game entirely, but they can potentially be incentivized to try this out for the next item loop drop box, for example. So taking small steps, but with the right people is the kind of aim for of game flip. So what do I think about this project? Well, I feel like this is a step in the right direction. We definitely need to have another way for game developers and publishers to hop on board. We definitely, they, they've definitely seen blockchain technology around and it's been around for a long time, but we don't see the adoption. And having advisors with experience in the industry and pull in this industry is extremely important for the adoption. So in a way, by contributing to this ICO, not only are you sponsoring the development of this project, the smart contracts and the SDKs for it, kind of paving the way to make it go forward, but you're also providing a way for the publishers to get tokens and to be incentivized to go and hop on board. It is kind of a little bit unfair if you think about it. They are a billion dollar industry and they should be the ones coming to us. But it does turn out that, of course, if you want true item ownership, this is something that we do have to fight for. And it's something that will get allow uh, the cryptocurrency community to gain overall on the whole. Of course, you are trusting Flip to be able to get these publishers on board. And this is something that is quite difficult. So I will make no exceptions there. Negotiating with publishers, even if you have the connections inside, is quite difficult and getting a good collaboration going is hard. You know, you can get a promise of a collaboration, but to get the next token in the next Assassin's Creed game or in the next Glue game, like the Kim Kardashian game or whatever that's gonna come out is gonna take a little bit of effort. And there's gonna be a lot of trial and error before this is over. But I do believe that overall, cryptocurrency does provide a huge value to the gaming community. And this is one of the ways to push for that. What do you guys think about this? I'd love to hear your comments below. Do you think this approach is valid? Do you think that having the publishers on board and persuading them to go from a top down approach is good? Or do you think a bottoms up approach is good? How do you think is the best way to solve this problem and get cryptocurrencies adopted and what do you think is the best way to get blockchain technology used in gaming? Because I really think that this is something that gaming is dying to accept. 
Of course, there are other games that are trying to use new tradable items, but they don't have tradable items. And that might be because the developers really just want to lock them into that ecosystem. So we see Blizzard going that way as well. And what do you think about this movement? Do you agree with that? Do you think items should be tradable? Leave a comment below and I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Remember to subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to receive notifications of new videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time.